So one of the most important features in DVM is timers. And out of the box, I try to configure them as much as humanly possible to be clear and concise with optimal defaults based on your spec and class so that you don't get timers that aren't necessary. But that's not always the case for every user because every user is different. So users might want to refine their timers and get them to the way they want them. So I try to include the guides for doing that built in the DBM. The initial setup covers a few different things of timers, like bar appearance, making them look the way you like, or configuring certain behaviors, which I can show you in-game instead. You know, bar behavior, you could change when the decimal shows, when the bar enlarges, or whether the bar enlarges at all. Like one thing that's requested a lot, people don't want to have two bars sometimes, or they only want to have one bar thing, period. And to do that, you just untoggle huge. And now this is it. These, the, these settings control your bars. There won't be enlarging below 10 anymore. They just, they'll just do this. And you configure just this if you only want one bar anchor. And that's just the basic setup. I want to go more in depth in this video about bar colors because I think that's the one thing that's not quite as understood by users. And that's the color by type system. You see, DBM's default colors aren't just randomly chosen. When you, when you start pull a boss and your timers look like a rainbow, there's a reason for that. Abilities are flagged, at least in the defaults, by their type. And you can see that the type suggestions are here already. Where you know the blue bars, the default, means that's an add timer. Red bars means that's an AoE. Purple bars means it's a targeted spell. And what does targeted mean? It means it's a spell that either targets a player with a debuff or targets the environment with some kind of spell effect. Like let's say a, a meteor is about to fall in a specific location you gotta dodge. That's a targeted spell because it's, it's targeting a specific spot in the environment. Then the light blue is interrupt, which kind of matches Blizzard's color to that with their interrupt icon. This green one is a roll timer. Now, what is a roll timer? Well, that's a timer for a specific roll, like say the tank, the tank uh, buster ability. That'll be green because that timer specifically applies to that specific roll. And usually in that case, that timer is only on by default for that specific role. Other specific roles might be a specific dispel or a specific healer assignment or even a niche DPS role if it is very, very specific to a certain DPS. And this one, the phase timer, which is pretty self-explanatory, I'll use this color if it's like the timer for the next phase change or something. And then these two down here, these are never set by default. And that needs to be emphasized. You will never see these colors by default. These are user set. And when you set these, they have additional options too. Like you can have it show a custom exclamation point icon in it. Or you could set it to always be a large bar regardless of how much time is remaining. But even if it has like 60 seconds left, that bar is set to always be large. But just because these are the default classifications doesn't mean you have to use it this way. You might decide entirely you don't want to do it by type. You know, you just want to set bars to any color you want. There's nothing in here that says you can't do that. You can go to a raid. Let's go to Dragonflight. Let's go to Mirror to Sucks, it's recent. And for rock. Okay, Blaze. You can click the color timer of it. And yes, it will tell you what the default assignments are. But just because these are what they are doesn't mean that's what it has to be. You could just go, well, I want this color. I want this timer red, period. And just ignore what the colors are. And again, like the ones I just talked about, important one and important two, you can set these as well. But basically, you can set any bar to any color. They're not locked to specific colors. And that's the one thing I think many people don't understand. In fact, originally, this menu actually only said like AOE, add, etc. And that was more confusing. 
I recently reclassified the menu to say color one through six and important one and two, just so users kind of understood that uh, these names are just the defaults, not, not the law of the land. But that's the color by type system. You can use it any way you want. And also, you don't have to keep the default colors either. You can go back to here and change them to anything you want. Like, maybe I want this uh, AOE timer to be puke green. Now it's puke green. Now, obviously, if you do want to go back to defaults, the like, bam, defaults. But now when you see these timers on the screen, you have a clear understanding of why it looks like a rainbow. This light blue is an interrupt example. This dark blue is ads. This is a tank timer. This is a bad debuff that goes out on targeted off players. This is a phase change timer. This is an AOE timer. I actually specifically made the timer demo use one of each timer type just to showcase and emphasize the difference between the colors. Two, one. And that's color bars by type. Four, three. And obviously pull and break timer as well. You can change uh, when the audio countdown starts. You can even add some certain fillers or filters. Two, Did you know if you're one, if you're one of those raids defensive. where you have a bench roster where you stay in the raid group, even if you're not actually in the raid, Maybe you don't want to keep seeing the pull timer when you're on the bench. You can click this. Now it blocks pull timers if the sender's not in the same zone as you are. Which is useful if you're out if you're out running around outside the raid, but still in the raid group when they're pulling the boss over and over again. That's what this filter is designed for. This these can be set independently. Like I actually do this as a uh, the small bars I have fill up, and the large bars I have empty. I think by default, it's they both fill up, but I like the distinction of one being going this way. If the bar is about to expire, I like going in this direction, versus the one that has a lot of time left going in this direction. And also going back to the color by type system, you can disable it entirely. If I click this, all timers are just this color, period. Let's say you, you're, you're just used to the way Big Leagues does it. You don't want to do anything. Uh, you just want to just stick to what you're used to. And I think the Big Leagues defaults are like red for uh, small bars and like blue for bars that are about to expire. Maybe it's the other way around. But you can do this neat little trick where you can click this. And then you can say you want to do this. Blue, red. I will demo that now. With a few couple clicks, I didn't quite get the red color co color code right, but you get the idea. These timers are red and then turn blue when they're about to expire. That's an option too, Running. with ease, if that's what you're used to. Because I recognize sometimes you use something for 10 years, that's what you're used to, and you're just you're set in your ways. Four, three, two, one. Okay, I think that's a little closer. Four, three, two, one. Clear incoming. And that's just the start. You can change it so that start and end colors are defined here. Otherwise, if you don't do this, this it uses a blend instead where the bar will start red and end blue, which is why it's actually doing something funny. Defensive. Where it's like, no, well, you can see what it's doing. It starts red and ends blue, which means it's purple partly through. Anyways, reset, reset. That's the default. The color by type is the default. And one last little flourish that DBM supports is what I call inline icons. You probably saw that in the test mode as well. But basically, icons that are featured in the Dungeon Journal, 
for example, let's go to a raid. Mir Jassol. Go to Farak. This ability is a tank ability. This is a healer. What I like to do is put that icon in the timer itself. Give even more emphasis of what that timer is. Just like Blaze might have a heroic icon in it. This ability would have a deadly icon in it, etc. And you can again see that in the demo mode. Start test mod. See how this bar has an interrupt icon. This is a tank icon. This has the magic icon, which means it can be dispelled by magic dispellers. This AoE has a healer icon in it. Those icons are also optional. You can disable inline icons. Run away. And they won't show anymore. Oh, the way the way the way it's coded, it doesn't live update. So if you're like in the middle of combat and you toggle this, it's not gonna show the change. But the next time the bar starts, it will show the change for the inline icon. And of course you can also do like icons on both sides if you want, or you can only do the right instead of the left, etc. Control bar spark. You get the idea. Our options are very configurable if you just look around a bit. And that's why I have the helpful guides here. This guide specifically is about color by type. You go up here, paste the Earl, and then here's the color by type. Now, some of the screenshots are dated. Like, you see this? This is what this used to look like. I didn't color it. And it just said the type. This was this was this this confused users. One. When you look at this, you didn't understand this menu meant you can change the color. So players tend to not touch this menu because it was unclear. And that's why the menu doesn't look like that anymore. Now it looks like this. Four. That's a lot more clear Two. what that menu is for. Defensive. The other menu. And in the timer, there's a menu next to it for countdown voice. And you're not just limited to one countdown voice. You can have as any countdown voice that's installed can be individually set on any ability. These globals just mean it'll use whatever the global is, which is set in countdowns and voice packs. You know, countdown one, countdown two, and countdown three. Those are the defaults. This, these are what's chosen if you set it to. One, two, or three. But you can also set custom to anything you want for any ability you want. If you want that ability to have a countdown on it, like Demon, uh, Heroes of the Storm, so be it. And that's the video on DBM timers. I hope it was at least somewhat helpful. But wait, there's one more thing. Maybe you don't like my timers at all. That's fine too. There's an alternative. You can just use this. Maybe you want your timers to just look like this. A timeline week or a, it takes all your DBM timers, chucks them out the window, and your timers will now just be a neat little timeline on your screen. And timers don't show up until they're below 30 seconds. And count down this way. That's an option too. This week R is fully compatible and supported by DBM. In fact, we've worked with Jods to make sure that this supports all features that DBM does, which includes pausing timers, resuming timers, up timers that update in place, like say uh there's a spell queue that DBM detects and it adjusts the timer. This will adjust the timer. This works with all DBM callbacks to ensure maximum compatibility. So this is also an option. Thank you for watching. And I hope you're enjoying these DBM feature videos. And I will see you in the next one.